Question 9. What are the potential risks associated with investing in VDE, such as commodity price fluctuations or geopolitical events? Investing in VDE, like any investment, carries inherent risks. Here's a breakdown of some key risks associated with VDE specifically. Commodity price fluctuations. Energy dependence, VDE is heavily invested in the energy sector, making it directly susceptible to fluctuations in oil, natural gas, and other energy commodity prices. Demand and supply, global energy demand and supply dynamics significantly impact prices. Geopolitical events, economic conditions, and alternative energy adoption can all influence these dynamics. Impact on VDE If energy commodity prices fall significantly, the company's VDE invests in could see declining profits and stock prices, potentially leading to a decline in VDE's price. Geopolitical events Supply chain disruptions, geopolitical instability in oil-producing regions can disrupt supply chains, leading to higher energy prices. This could benefit VDE in the short term, but might also lead to economic slowdowns, ultimately impacting energy demand and potentially hurting VDE's price. Policy changes, government policies around energy production, environmental regulations, and international trade agreements can all impact the energy sector. These changes could influence the profitability of the company's VDE holds, affecting its overall performance. Other potential risks Concentration risk As discussed earlier, VDE's concentration in its top holdings magnifies the impact of any individual company's performance on the ETF's price. Sector risk the energy sector itself is cyclical and can experience periods of significant boom and bust. DDE's focus on this sector exposes investors to this inherent risk. Currency risk If a significant portion of VDE's holdings are denominated in foreign currencies, fluctuations in exchange rates can impact the ETF's value. Risk management strategies Diversification Consider including VDE as part of a broader portfolio that also includes investments in other sectors and asset classes to mitigate the impact of energy-specific risks. Long-term investment horizon A longer investment timeframe can help smooth out short-term volatility associated with commodity price fluctuations and geopolitical events. Investment research Stay informed about global energy market trends, geopolitical risks, and the financial health of the companies VDE invests in. Understanding the potential risks associated with VDE allows you to make informed investment decisions. While it offers exposure to the energy sector with the potential for high returns, it also comes with inherent risks. By carefully considering your risk tolerance and incorporating diversification strategies, you can potentially mitigate these risks and position VDE as a suitable component of your overall investment portfolio. Question 10. How does VDE fit within an overall investment portfolio strategy? Does it provide diversification benefits? VDE can potentially fit within an overall investment portfolio strategy, but its role depends on your investment goals and risk tolerance. Here's a breakdown of how VDE functions within a portfolio and its diversification benefits. Potential Role of VDE Exposure to the energy sector VDE offers a convenient way to gain exposure to the energy sector. If you believe the energy sector has strong growth potential, VDE can be a suitable option. Income Generation VDE offers a quarterly dividend distribution potentially providing a steady income stream for income-oriented investors. Capital Appreciation During periods of rising energy prices, VDE has the potential to experience significant capital appreciation. Limited Diversification Benefits VDE itself does not provide significant diversification benefits due to several factors. Sector Concentration VDE is heavily concentrated in the energy sector, meaning its performance is almost entirely tied to the performance of that sector. 
limited geographic focus, the holdings within VDE might primarily focus on developed economies, neglecting potential growth in emerging energy markets. Concentration in top holdings A large portion of VDE's assets are invested in its top holdings, further reducing diversification within the energy sector itself. Strategies for Portfolio Integration If you choose to include VDE in your portfolio, consider these strategies to enhance diversification. Allocation Weighting Allocate a specific percentage of your overall portfolio to VDE, ensuring it aligns with your risk tolerance and overall investment goals. A smaller allocation can limit the impact of VDE's volatility. Combine with diversified holdings. Pair VDE with ETFs or mutual funds that offer broad diversification across different sectors, asset classes, and geographic regions. Consider alternatives. Explore broader energy sector ETFs with a wider range of holdings or even commodity ETFs that track specific energy resources like oil or natural gas. VDE offers targeted exposure to the energy sector with the potential for high returns and income generation. However, its lack of diversification makes it less suitable as a core portfolio holding. By carefully considering allocation weighting, combining it with diversified holdings, and potentially exploring alternatives, you can integrate VDE into your portfolio strategy while managing potential risks. Question 11. How does VDE compare to actively managed energy sector mutual funds in terms of fees and performance? Here's a breakdown of how VDE compares to actively managed energy sector mutual funds in terms of fees and performance. Fees VDE, VDE boasts a very low expense ratio, typically around 0. 0.10% annually, 1. This means for every $10,000 invested, you'd pay only $10 per year in fees. Actively managed funds Actively managed energy sector mutual funds typically have significantly higher expense ratios, often ranging from 1. 0% to 2. 0% or even higher, 2. These higher fees cover the salaries of portfolio managers and analysts who actively research and select investments within the fund. Performance Passive versus Active management debate. Historically, passively managed funds like VDE have often matched or even outperformed actively managed funds after accounting for fees. 3. This is because actively managed funds need to generate returns that exceed their higher expense ratios to justify their costs. Impact of market conditions. Actively managed funds have the potential to outperform the market particularly during periods of high volatility or inefficiency. However, consistently achieving this is challenging, and many actively managed funds underperform the market after fees. Specific Fund Performance Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. It's crucial to compare the specific performance of VDE with actively managed energy sector mutual funds you're considering. Many financial websites allow you to compare the historical returns of different investment options. Other considerations Management style Actively managed funds offer the potential for superior returns through the expertise of portfolio managers. However, their success relies heavily on the skills of those managers. Investment flexibility Actively managed funds have the flexibility to invest in a broader range of energy-related companies, including smaller companies or those in emerging markets. VDE's focus is primarily on large-cap companies in developed economies. Minimum investment Some actively managed energy sector mutual funds might have higher minimum investment requirements compared to VDE, which can be a barrier for some investors. Choosing between VDE and actively managed funds. The decision depends on your investment goals and preferences. Cost-conscious investors. If minimizing fees is a priority, VDE's low expense ratio makes it a compelling option. Belief in active management. 
If you believe a skilled portfolio manager can outperform the market in the energy sector, then an actively managed fund might be worth considering despite the higher fees. Time horizon and research Actively managed funds might require more research and a longer investment horizon to potentially benefit from their active management style. DDE offers a low-cost, passively managed way to gain exposure to the energy sector. Actively managed funds have the potential for higher returns, but come with higher fees and require more research to select a well-performing fund. Carefully consider your investment goals, risk tolerance, and resources available for research before choosing between VDE and actively managed energy sector mutual funds. Question 12. Are there any other energy sector ETFs that offer different risk, reward profiles, or strategic focuses? There are several energy sector ETFs available that offer different risk, reward profiles, and strategic focuses compared to VDE. Here are a few examples. Focus on market capitalization. XLE, SPDR Energy Select Sector Fund, similar to VDE. XLE is a large cap energy sector ETF. However, it might hold slightly different companies or have a different weighting methodology, potentially leading to some variation in performance. It also typically has a slightly higher expense ratio than VDE. SPDR SP Midcap Energy ETF, XME, this ETF focuses on midcap companies within the energy sector. Mid-cap companies can offer higher growth potential than large-cap companies, but also come with increased volatility. The expense ratio of XME is likely to be higher than VDE. Danek Vector's Junior Oil Gas ETF, JOBJ, this ETF delves into the small-cap energy space, offering the potential for even higher growth, but also significantly higher risk due to the volatility of small companies. JOBJ likely has a higher expense ratio than VDE as well. Focus on specific energy segments. ICLN, SPDR SP Global Clean Energy ETF, this ETF focuses on companies involved in clean energy solutions like solar, wind, and geothermal power. While not directly tied to traditional oil and gas, it offers exposure to the broader energy transition theme. The expense ratio of ICLN might be higher than VDE. TAN, iShares Global Water Infrastructure ETF, this ETF isn't purely an energy sector ETF, but it does hold companies involved in water infrastructure, which can be essential for energy production, particularly in unconventional sources like oil sands. The expense ratio of TAN might be higher than VDE. Strategic Focus PXE, Principal Buffer Protect Energy Index ETF, this ETF offers a buffer mechanism, aiming to protect investors from a certain percentage of downside risk in exchange for capping potential upside returns. The expense ratio of PXE is likely to be considerably higher than VDE. DRIP, SPDR SP Dividend Aristocrats ETF, this ETF isn't limited to the energy sector but it holds companies with a history of increasing dividends. While some energy companies might be included, the focus is on dividend-paying companies across various sectors. The expense ratio of DRIP might be higher than VDE. Choosing the right ETF When selecting an energy sector ETF, besides VDE, consider the following factors. Risk tolerance How much volatility are you comfortable with? Are you looking for high growth potential and higher risk of smaller companies or the relative stability of large cap companies? Investment goals. Are you aiming for capital appreciation, dividend income, or a combination of both? Investment horizon. How long do you plan to hold the ETF? Actively managed funds or those with higher volatility might be more suitable for longer time horizons. DDE represents just one option within the energy sector ETF landscape. By understanding the risk, reward profiles, and strategic focuses of other ETFs, 
you can make informed decisions to tailor your exposure to the energy sector based on your specific investment needs. Question 13. Can DDE be used to hedge against potential downturns in the energy sector? DDE isn't necessarily an ideal tool for hedging against potential downturns in the energy sector for a few reasons. Direct exposure, DDE itself is heavily invested in the energy sector. If the energy sector experiences a downturn, DDE's price is likely to decline as well. It doesn't offer protection against this sector-specific risk. Concentration risk, DDE's concentration in its top holdings magnifies the impact of the energy sector's performance on the ETF's price. A downturn in the sector could be amplified within DDE due to its holdings. Alternative hedging strategies. Here are some strategies that might be more effective for hedging against energy sector downturns. Inverse energy ETFs. These ETFs aim to deliver the opposite return of an underlying energy sector index. If the energy sector goes down, these ETFs go up, potentially offsetting losses in your overall portfolio. However, these can be complex instruments and come with their own set of risks. Put options on energy sector ETFs. Purchasing put options on an energy sector ETF grants you the right, but not the obligation, to sell the ETF at a specific price by a certain date. If the energy sector declines, you can exercise the put option and potentially limit your losses. Options trading requires a higher level of investment knowledge and carries the risk of options expiring worthless. Diversification The most effective hedge against a downturn in any specific sector is diversification across different sectors and asset classes. By including investments outside the energy sector in your portfolio, the impact of a downturn in energy is mitigated. Factors to consider Risk tolerance Hedging strategies like inverse ETFs or options trading can be complex and involve additional risks. Ensure they align with your risk tolerance. Investment expertise Options trading requires a good understanding of options mechanics and strategies. Consider your investment knowledge before pursuing this approach. Hedging costs, inverse ETFs might come with higher expense ratios, and options trading involves transaction fees. Evaluate the costs associated with hedging strategies. While VDE itself isn't a suitable hedge against energy sector downturns, alternative strategies like inverse ETFs, put options, or portfolio diversification can be more effective. Carefully consider your risk tolerance, investment knowledge, and the costs involved before implementing any hedging strategy. Question 14. Are there any alternative investment strategies that could achieve similar exposure to the energy sector with potentially better risk-adjusted returns? Here are some alternative investment strategies that could potentially offer similar exposure to the energy sector with better risk-adjusted returns depending on your risk tolerance and goals. 1. Diversified Energy Sector ETFs Focus, these ETFs hold a wider range of companies within the energy sector compared to VDE's concentration in large-cap companies. This diversification can help reduce risk and potentially improve risk-adjusted returns. Examples OSPDRSP Energy Select Sector Fund XLE, similar to VDE, but might hold slightly different companies or have a different weighting methodology. Oh, iShares Global Energy ETF, IXC, invests across developed and emerging markets, offering broader exposure. 2. Strategic Energy Sector ETFs Focus, these ETFs target specific segments within the energy sector potentially offering higher growth potential or focusing on specific themes. Examples OSPDRSP Global Clean Energy ETF, ICLN focuses on clean energy solutions like solar, wind, and geothermal power. OVANEC Vectors Oil Services ETF, OIH, invests in companies that provide services to the oil and gas industry. 3. Commodity-Based Investments 
Focus. Invest directly in energy commodities like oil or natural gas through futures contracts or commodity ETFs. Considerations. Commodity prices can be highly volatile, requiring a high risk tolerance. These investments might not be suitable for all investors. 4. Actively Managed Energy Sector Mutual Funds Focus These funds are managed by professional portfolio managers who actively select and weight their holdings within the energy sector. Considerations Actively managed funds typically come with higher expense ratios than ETFs. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results, and these funds require research to choose a well-performing one. Risk-Adjusted Returns When considering alternative strategies, keep risk-adjusted returns in mind. This metric considers the potential return of an investment relative to the risk involved. Here's how these alternatives might compare to VDE in terms of risk and potential returns. Diversified Energy Sector ETFs, potentially lower risk than VDE due to diversification, but returns might also be slightly lower. Strategic Energy Sector ETFs, can offer higher growth potential than VDE if the specific segment they target outperforms, but also carry higher risk. Commodity-Based Investments highest potential returns, but also the highest risk due to commodity price volatility. Actively managed funds, potentially outperform VDE if the manager is skilled, but come with higher fees and require research. Remember, there's no single best alternative to VDE. By understanding the risk, reward profiles of different investment options and tailoring your choice to your specific goals and risk tolerance, you can potentially achieve similar exposure to the energy sector with potentially better risk-adjusted returns. All right, everyone, that's all the time we have for VDE today on Chad ETF. So, the verdict? VDE offers a convenient way to gain exposure to the energy sector, but it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Remember, consider your risk tolerance and investment goals. If you're looking for pure diversification, a broader energy sector ETF might be a better fit. For those with a higher risk tolerance, strategic energy ETFs or even commodity-based investments could offer a different angle. No matter your choice, do your research. We've linked some resources in the description below to help you compare different energy investment options. And hey! If you have any questions about VDE or energy investing in general, leave a comment below and let's chat. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the next episode of Chat ETF.